Hi there. Earlier this morning, or by the time you watch this, yesterday, I used the daubing type strategy to illustrate the difference between an exact percentage offset and a true percentage offset uh, when you're training. I've revisited this strategy and modified it to provide me with a daubing strategy that provides cover or insurance. Um, it's busy running in the background at the moment, so let me just run through what you see here. Essentially, for an overall stake of £100, it places two bets. The first one is the insurance bet, if you like. So a £75 bet, with, or a trade, I should say, with an offset of 25% provides you with this lay offset here. And then the actual dobbing part, the £25, again at the same odds as the previous one, will dob at 4.5. Now the idea being is that if the first lay is taken, i.e. the covering lay, it will recover the stake that you have sitting on your dob. So effectively it generates a free bet. Now if that covering bet is taken, that covering lay, you're guaranteed not to lose. And consequently, as your horse, as the race progresses, you can lay off or green up at any point that you like. Indeed, you can actually go in and cancel the dobbing lay so that you end up with a free bet on your chosen runner. Now, in this particular case, it's been an abject failure. Uh, not to worry. Um, I haven't been doing any form analysis on any of these runners. If I bring up the watch list uh, that I've had today, um, you can see there's been a couple of reds there. You can see there's been a couple of successful dogs and insurance cover. And there's one there that was effectively a scratched trade where the insurance one was taken but the dob part wasn't. And then within that particular race, because the insurance part was taken, I could have traded out for 30, 40 pounds at any point once that insurance bet was taken. Um, I should emphasize that in all these races here, I haven't been doing any form analysis. I've literally been going in and randomly selecting a horse, typically around seven eight nine ten range in terms of odds um, so i would expect having done that i would expect a random distribution of results uh, and that's essentially what we're getting at the moment okay so we'll go skip ahead to the next race and that will run but let me just actually show you the strategy uh, and you can see here with uh, Mops a Legend in my selection on this particular race. So at the moment, it's going to back on at 11 for £25. This and it'll lay off minutes. £50 this is at the corresponding. Well, let me just increase the width of that call. So it'll lay off at half that price. And so that's the dobbing part. The insurance part backs at £75 at the same price and provides a lay for £25 more at roughly 100 here and that essentially gives you the cover or the, uh, for the um, stake on the dobbing part. Now of course you can go in and modify these figures if you wish. For example if you wanted a bigger dob what you can do at the expense of a reduced stake on your insurance, you can increase the stake on the dob. But when you do that, to provide cover for the stake on the dobbing part, you need to increase the offset. So just to remind you where those things are, if we go to the action command here, or the action tab, I should say, you, this is the settings that you would need to change in combination with your stake. 
Okay, so at the moment, if I wanted to increase my DOB value, say for example, I wanted that to be 40, I'd have to increase that to 40, leaving that offset there. But I then need to go into this rule, which is the insurance rule, providing cover, and change my stake to 60 and adjust the offset, increase the offset accordingly in order to provide me with that level of insurance. And of course, the bigger the offset, the less likely your insurance is going to be matched, especially if you're randomly picking horses like I am here. So you have that option available to you. And as I say, whenever your insurance bet is matched, you can cancel the lay for the dog and have a free bet on your uh, runner. Equally, you could create an insurance setting whereby you don't recover the whole of the stake sitting on your dog. You might just want to recover half of it. Or alternatively, you can put in additional rules here that incrementally cover the stake on your dog portion of the bet. Okay, so that's essentially it. Have a wee play around with the numbers and see what you think. Um, so far, as I say, I haven't done any analysis on the horses that I'm selecting. Uh, that's uh, something one would do it long before the event happens. But um, for the purposes of demonstration, I've just been randomly selecting horses. Um, so I think um, we'll just watch one more race as it goes in. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, you'll see it in this action. Is now in play. So, we just switch to that market. Uh, we're off and running. This is our two mile national hunt. So, you can see as long as your selection is shortening, you can green out at any time, irrespective of whether your bets are taken or not. So, we're looking for a nine for our cover to be fully implemented on this particular race. And as soon as that is taken, you'll see that you this here never goes red. But by definition, for your horse to take that cover, it's got to shorten in price. I mean, you can see you can we could have greened up at any time. Uh, so here we have the cover's been taken. We want it to go down to six for the dog to work. However, you can simply cancel that, and you'll see. You've got a £300 bet on Mox Legend. So if you were to cancel that, you could do, sit back and wait and see if your odds are going to be much lower than you initially expected for the dog, and consequently green out for a much higher figure. Uh, so, for example, if you clear that and put in a lay at evens, for example, you can spread that across there and find yourself with £150 rather than the £50 that you'll get if this lay here is taken. The important thing being, however, is that we have a scratch trade here, so you're not going to lose anything. So we'll just let this race run uh, and see what happens, whether we get the daub or whether we uh, wind up with a scratch. It looks like it's drifting at the moment, but you know there's still 50% of the race to come. Uh, so there's every opportunity for it to, to come back in again. But as I say, you don't need to use these particular settings. I just came up with these settings earlier on today, and I've just been starting to test it uh, towards the tail end of the afternoon racing. Whether these settings are optimum in terms of long-term profitability, I don't know. And clearly it would help if I wasn't randomly selecting horses. So this is where you would make use of uh, Timeform and various other sites, as well as the historical data that you get from Betfair, free of charge. And I have alluded to that in the past and demonstrated where you can get it. So have a look for that video if you don't know where it is. Okay, so we're approaching the tail end of this race. It still doesn't look like it's going to come down. But as you can see, you could easily, if you think it's not coming, you could easily manually trade out before that point is reached. 
if you uh, prefer to take some profit rather than just scratching the trade. But of course, for this particular mechanism, this is the type of thing that you might set up in the morning before going to work and then just letting it run. You could also, within the rule or within the strategy, you could also have a green up option there as well. And there's our, uh, there's our uh, lay taken. So we've had a fully matched dob on the dobbing part, which has contributed £25. And of course, our cover also contributed £25. So we now have 50 quid across the field. Perfect. OK, I hope you found that interesting. By all means, give it a bash yourself, play around with the figures and let us know how you get on. Cheers.